Hello, in this video we'll talk about graft rejection. This terminology might not be new for you. You have heard it multiple times that skin graft is rejected. And it's also known from ancient time that grafting was pretty common. But in this video we'll talk about the immunological basis of graft rejection. So graft rejection is a common phenomenon. But tissue grafting is a very important surgical process. Imagine you have a third degree burn in your hand and a graft from other places of your body can repair the skin or replace the skin in that burned area, right? So that is why it's a nice process. But there is a risk associated with this process. There could be rejection of graft and our goal is to learn why grafts could be rejected. So here is an example of a burn site. One possibility is the graft would be appropriate, it won't be rejected and it, would be, it, it is accepted by the recipient, right? So healing after grafting. There could be other possibility as well that it didn't heal and the graft is rejected and necrosis happened in that region. So, in this video, we will question why sometimes graft is rejected and why sometimes graft could be accepted. So let's look at rejection of graft in few and ask few questions. First of all, we will ask why the graft is rejected. What are the key cellular players that mediates the graft rejection process? Then what is the time scale of graft rejection? Before that, let us familiarize with few terms such as autograft. Autograft is a self tissue that is transferred from one location of your body to the other location. Let's say you have a burn site in your hand. So from your leg, a portion of skin is taken and grafted on your hand. So this kind of situation is an example of autograft. Then isograft means that transferring of this graft between genetically identical individuals for example monozygotic twins or identical twins right then let's talk about allograft it is a situation where the graft is transferred between two members of the same species but their genetic makeup might be different and here is the chance of rejection right the chances of rejection of an allograft is pretty high unless and until certain criteria are matched. We'll learn about that. Lastly, the extreme most situation, xenograft. That is a situation when a graft is obtained from a different species altogether and grafted to an individual. Now, let us take a specific example, right? Let's say a portion of our skin is burned and we need to graft a skin tissue to repair it. So autograft is uh, given to that particular burn site and let's see what happens. So once the autograft is given, there could be revascularization just underneath that damaged site. There could be some amount of immune cells creating a little bit of inflammation in that area but over time in a course of 7 to 10 days that portion would be healed and now you cannot like distinguish between the burned area versus the healed area right and ultimately it would be resolved in a span of 2 weeks. Now let's talk about, talk about an allograft. Now in this allograft similarly there would be vascularization phase lot of immune cells would be moving out of this vascularized, vascularized region and they would mount an immune response against that graft. There would be cellular infiltration, there would be intense inflammation. Ultimately, this might lead to huge amount of cytokine or inflammatory cytokine secretion in that region. A combination of all these factors would ultimately create huge inflammatory response which might lead to a necrosis in that region. So thrombosis and necrosis can occur in this particular region. And ultimately what we would see from outside 
that this graft is rejected. This also happens in a time course of 10 to 14 days. Now let me tell you, there could be two type of graft rejection. rejection. First set graft rejection, which kind of takes 14 to 15 days and the second set rejection, which is quicker and it only takes 10 days to reject the second set of graft. Like you have rejection of one graft and you again grafted this in the same location. How fast that graft would be rejected is shown here. Now let's talk about what are the key cell types that are behind graft rejection. And the answer comes from classical experiments. Here is a strain of mouse which is known as a naive strain, right? So first kin graft would be given to this particular strain B from a mouse strain A. So the graft is introduced to mouse strain B. So there would be first set of rejection possibly, right? If the graft is doesn't graft is not matching and the immune system of this mouse is considering it to be uh, uh, alien species or a kind of like a foreign substance, right? And that happens in a course of 14 days as we have learned. Then there could be a second set of grafting and that would be rejected in a time span of a further 10 days, right? Now, if particular cell types such as T cells are taken from a first set rejection mice and injected to a naive strain, then it shows a kinetics which is very similar to a second set rejection, right? So after putting the prime T cells in the strain B mouse and then grafting the tissue leads to a second set rejection, the kinetics become faster. That tells us in turn T cells or T helper cells might have a role in terms of graft rejection. There is another set of experiment which tells this phenomena in a more confirmative way. So there are four set of mouse and we have given grafts. Now along with grafts in set 2, 3 and 4 we have given specific antibodies such as anti-CD8 antibodies to neutralize the CD8 T, T cell population. Then in the set 3 we have given anti-CD4 and uh, anti-CD4 to neutralize the T helper cells. And lastly, we give a combination of anti-CD4 and anti-CD8. And let's look at the survival of the graft in each of these cases. We see this kind of graph. When we have blocked both CD4 positive and CD8 positive T cells, the graft's survival time is very high compared to singly blocking any of these uh, type of T cells. These experiment tells us that T cell is a key player behind this graft rejection phenomena. Now let us, let us talk about two phases of graft rejection. One is a sensitization phase. These are cellular events that we are talking about right now. And then the second is the effector phase. In the sensitization phase, the graft is recognized as foreign substance. And in the effector phase, necrosis or damage happens. So here is the graft, which would have dendritic cells, macrophages, etc. in that graft. And it is showing uh, or displaying the antigens that is present in those graft. And that can be treated as foreign by the T cells present in the recipient. So dendritic cell expresses specific molecules known as class 2 MHC. If you want to learn in details, you can click the link in the desc description or in the I button. Now T helper cells would get activated. Once T cell T helper cells are activated from the macro by the macrophages coming from these graft tissue, then it can secrete various cytokines such as IL-2, IL-6, etc. And all of these cytokines in turn activates different type of cell population such as CD8 cytotoxic cell population, B cells or DTH cells. Now there are multiple responses that can happen. For example, DTH cells can secrete interferon gamma that might activate macrophages. 
an active macrophage secretes several lytic enzymes which can damage the tissue. CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells can secrete porphyrin and granzyme to lyse the tissue. Also, there could be antibody mediated response. Antibody might determine specific epitopes on this grafted tissue and there could be antibody dependent cytotoxic response mediated by uh, natural killer cell or other cell types. A combination of all these cellular mechanism leads to apoptosis or huge amount of necrosis in that particular grafted region and that leads to graft rejection. So what we have learned so far is the cellular mechanism. mechanism. But in order to prevent graft reje rejection, there are specific precautions which are taken. And first and foremost thing is HLA typing. So MHC molecules are key player in terms of the sensitization phase of the graft rejection. So HLA typing is done before transplantation. In a different video, we'll talk more about the HLA antigens and HLA typing. So stay tuned and watch more videos from this channel. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And you can use my code EPI10 to get a 10% discount in Unacademy lectures. So subscribe now. You can also support my channel in Patreon. And thank you for listening. See you in the next video.